To download the correct version of the satellite router image to the satellite router, please follow these instructions. Open the iSight application. Right-click TDMA Remote and log into the satellite router. If the Telnet session is not opened, right-click on the TDMA remote. Select Connect and then Telnet. Enter the username Admin and use the same password as in the previous step. This will allow you to monitor the progress of the version change. Right-click the TDMA remote, then select Download Package. Click Open and then browse for the cumulative update located in the remote package. Make sure that the checkboxes Don't Check Version, Downloaded Images Only, and Don't Reset are selected. Click Start, then navigate to the Telnet window. Once this is completed, you will see the message Flash Completed in the Telnet window. Continue to the next step only when you have seen this message. When downloading has finished, go to the Download Package window. Click Open and then browse for the RMT file located in the Remote Package folder. Make sure that you select the checkboxes Don't Check Version, Downloaded Images Only, and Don't Reset. Pay close attention to the last checkbox. Click Start and then navigate to the Telnet window. After a few minutes, you will see the message Flash completed in the Telnet window. When downloading has finished, go to the Download Package window and click Close. Now, you will need to load the option file. For that, go to the next section to complete the version update. To load the option file, please follow these instructions. Save the option file SkyVision sent to you onto your desktop. Open the HyperTerminal or PuTTY application to monitor the progress of the following steps. If the iSight application is not open, open it now. Right-click the TDMA Remote submenu, then select Download Option from Disk. Browse for the option file and click Open to load it to the satellite router from your desktop. Choose Yes to approve the downloading of the option file. In order to complete the loading of the option file, iSight will request to reset your satellite router. Choose Reset Now. Monitor the hyperterminal or PuTTY application and wait to see the iDirect login. Login as usual and confirm that the satellite router has finished rebooting. Repeat the step, checking your version of the satellite router, to confirm that the satellite router version has been updated. Make sure that the satellite router operates with the new option file by checking that the IP address of the satellite router is the same as the ETHO underscore one address in the option file. Once you have loaded the option file, you will need to change the IP configurations on your PC to DHCP. To do this, navigate to the local area connection properties and follow these instructions. In the General tab, navigate to the Internet Protocol and click Properties. Select both Obtain an IP address automatically and Obtain DNS Server Address automatically. Click OK and close both the Internet Protocol and the Local Area Connection Properties windows. You have now changed the IP configurations on your PC to DHCP. In order to confirm the azimuth and elevation calculations using the iSight application, follow these instructions. Login as admin to the satellite router with iSight as previously explained.
right-click on the TDMA remote icon. Go to Align Antenna and then choose Antenna Pointing. If you have already loaded the option file, the next three steps have already been configured and you just need to confirm that they are correct. Under Remote Location, enter the latitude and longitude of your VSAT location. Under Spacecraft Position, enter the satellite longitude. Under Elevation Information, enter your antenna's offset according to your antenna manual. Under Gross Antenna Pointing Information, you will find the Elevation Actual and the Azimuth True final calculations. Now, you will need to fine-tune the alignment of your antenna to the correct satellite. To do this, you can either use a Spectrum Analyzer or the EyeSight application. To align your antenna to the correct satellite using a Spectrum Analyzer, follow these instructions. Find the downlink carrier details as stated in the option file sent to you by SkyVision for reference. Open the option file. Scroll down to the Modem Parameters paragraph. The downlink frequency carrier in Hertz will be located next to the RX underscore frequency. This value needs to be converted to an L-band range. To do this, divide the value by 1 million. Next to the RX underscore bit rate, you will find a value in bits that you can convert to the span required on the spectrum analyzer. The conversion needs to be from bits per second to megabits per second. To do this, divide the value by 1 million. This is the SkyVision downlink carrier. Connect the LNB to the splitter input using a 75 ohm RG6 coaxial cable. Connect the splitter DC pass through output to the satellite router. Connect the other splitter output to the spectrum analyzer. Warning, make sure that you are using a DC block on your spectrum analyzer input. In the event of a bad connection, check the cables to see if they are damaged. Adjust the spectrum analyzer to the beacon frequency of the satellite or to the SkyVision downlink carrier, where the center frequency will be the calculated RX underscore frequency and the span will be the calculated RX underscore bitrate, just in units of megahertz instead of megabits per second. Adjust the elevation to the correct value according to the site location and antenna offset. Sweep the sky in the expected azimuth area until you acquire the satellite signal. If the signal is not acquired, decrease or increase the elevation angle by slightly adjusting the strut and repeat the azimuth sweep until the signal is acquired. Rotate the feed component until you achieve the correct polarity confirmed by optimal signal representation. If you cannot confirm reception of the satellite signal, point the antenna towards another familiar satellite. Check to see if you can receive a signal. Receiving a signal will verify that the receive chain is operational. Once the familiar satellite signal is acquired, record the inclinometer and compass measurements to confirm the offset. Now that you have confirmed signal reception from a familiar satellite and that your VSAT is operational, repeat steps 6 and 7 in the Using a Spectrum Analyzer chapter until the correct satellite signal is acquired, or contact SkyVision for further assistance. Next, adjust the feed horn slightly and monitor the size of the carrier on the spectrum to complete the maximization of the gain. To determine the best polarization setting, Rotate the feed element until you acquire the strongest signal level, which will have the least amount of interference from the opposing polarization. For more information on polarization, consult a satellite reference document.